Hello, hi everyone. As planned, here I am to talk about uh, the impact of twin flames and soulmates on uh, the collective unconscious that has to do with the change of paradigms. First of all, for those uh, new, our uh, Facebook uh, page, fan page, and our blog, um, I would like to say something about uh, why I have uh, uh, offer myself to do this live chat about the subject and basically it's because um, in the blog awakening.goypaz.com I have shared 22 chapters of uh, the twin flame story my twin flame story uh, but focused on the, the inner process, all the changes that it evoked and it uh, stimulated uh, to raise my own consciousness, to raise vibration, and uh, to start putting my mind in a direction that... Uh, had to do with, uh, and has to do still, with uh, impacting somehow the collective unconscious because we are in a very strong need. I'm going to take my glasses out for a little bit. We are in a very strong need as humanity to be part of the change that uh, planet Earth is going through and our relationship to cosmic energy and uh, how human consciousness is part of this uh, deal. I could talk maybe about the yugas and uh, there are different perspectives about uh, the yugas, um, yet uh, we are definitely going through a change of age, change of era. We are either we have entered or we are entering the new age, which is the Aquarian age, and that has to do a lot with um, becoming or actually stimulating the best part of our humanity. And uh, for that to happen, we need to re-encounter with ourselves. Uh, we need to reconnect with the true meaning of our existence. And uh, we need to remember that love is the reason why we exist. So in order for that to happen, in order for us to remember what love is, we need to go through this process and it comes to my mind, uh, the tower card in the tarot, um, mainly the one I use, which is um, Alias Crowley's Thought Tarot, which is the destruction that comes from inside to restore a new vision, the Eye of Horus, which brings a new vision that's more integrated with our true essence. And we can start wondering and asking why twin flames have been meeting for the past decades. This was not as strong in the back in the 80s, in the 70s. Maybe a couple of twin flames now and then have met 
but the energy of uh, Stream Flames meeting has become very strong in the past decade or so. Very, very strong. Many people having very strange and weird experiences that uh, have certain patterns, certain patterns that repeat for all the twin flames. I actually I cannot say that they repeat for all the twin flames, but it has been a pattern for many twin flames. And this pattern has to do with uh, the twin flames not living in the same city, but being separate either by cities or countries. Uh, another, um, another trait of twin flames has to do with um, one of them being a little more spiritually awakened than the other. And uh, there are like many difficulties in the reunion of twin flames for most twin flames, not for all twin flames. Uh, and that has to do a lot with what we need to do to find a way to change the reality that we have created. Hi, Maya. <laughs> Thanks for coming here. This is the, we are doing this because uh, of you. So thank you. And um, okay, so in order for humans from now, the day and age now humans, in order for us, to change our patterns, to change the reality that we have co-created in this world, which is quite, quite, quite dysfunctional. And um, I'm sure Krishnamurti is rejoicing every time I use the word social dysfunction or dysfunctional world. Well, in order for us, to create a new reality, we need sort of to um, destroy the one that we have created. But humans, we are quite lazy and we don't change easily. We feel very comfortable in the reality that we have created. And in spite of it being so dysfunctional, we just adapt because that's what not only humans, but species do. We either adapt or we die. So uh, in order to change from the roots, we need to go to our roots, our personal inner most deep truth roots and start breaking apart the conditioning. That's why I, I, I really love Master Yoda from Star Wars because he has the most deep teaching and truth when he said, you have to unlearn what we have learned. You have to, he told it to Luke, you have to unlearn what you have learned. Luminous beings are we, not discrete matter. Feel the energy around you. Oh, just, you know, it's a very powerful teaching anyway. So, just imagine the, the hero's journey uh, from uh, Joseph Campbell. Uh, it's a hero's journey because he, goes, he has to go inside and look for himself and break apart. We have to break apart in pieces. Structures, the, the, the structures of our mind which create reality are very deeply rooted, creating a very horrible reality that we live nowadays. Too much hate, too much uh, aggressiveness, um, 
too much fear, too much greed. That's the reality that we live in. And uh, it's time. We need to change. We need to change that reality. So that's why Twin Flames are meeting. Now, before I talk really about the relationship per se, I want to share with you that um, something that is very old and it has to do a lot with why we are looking for our significant other. There are many ways to look at this. Obviously, I'm just going to share some visions and uh, hopefully uh, those visions will resonate with you. So Plato, a great philosopher that I imagine you have heard of, he uh, he had he has he has written this symposium. The meeting of different thinkers, different philosophers, to talk about uh, love and the different phases of love. And what struck me about that symposium was um, when Aristophanes came to talk. And uh, he basically said that in order for us to understand love, we have to understand human behavior. Uh, and, and then he came around to talk about this original human being. That's so fascinating because <laughs> that's the part that was struck me the most. And um, he said that the original human being that we have forgotten about it was a round being. It was not like two feet that we stand on, but it was a round bean. And this round bean had three different sexes. The female sex, which came from the earth, the male sex, which came from the sun, and the androgynous, which came from the moon. And uh, this bean had four extremities, two faces that were uh, you know, knit together, and the, it was a very, very powerful being because it was complete and it was very powerful. So this being with, uh, you know, four legs, four arms, uh, and everything doubled, threatened Zeus and threatened the gods. And then Zeus wanted to dispose and kill them with thunders and lightning and something like that. But he didn't want, he didn't want to lose their devotion. And so he sent Apollo to have them cut in half. And once they were cut in half, they were also sewed in our belly button. Um, is basically the point where everything was neat and, and sewn and things like that. <laughs> so interesting. And um, he said, uh, okay, from those beings, when they were, they were cut, they lose their power of being complete and being one. And those who um, were cut into two males, uh, two male sexes, became um, homosexual gay men, and the two females that were cut in two were two females, the lesbian females, and the androgynous were the heterosexual. And according to our list of things, that, uh, that's why we have this, this eagerness, this desire to find our other half and become whole again, because when we are complete and whole, we feel the strongest uh, and most powerful. So it was so interesting to read about, you know, about the platonic love has to do with also with this kind of uh, twin flame love or even soulmates. We'll, we'll talk later about soulmates, but anyway. 
And um, what was so interesting is that, you know, this is quite old. It's way before Christ, like three to four hundred years before Christ. And um, they had all these ideas. They were not so uh, polluted about sexuality as we are nowadays, obviously. So it was quite interesting, and so I wanted to share that mythology. You can research and read about it. You can find it in the Symposium by uh, um, Plato. You can find it in on the internet. It's it's there, and there are many interpretations. And so when when I was when I started having the twin flame experience, um, actually it came with so many mystical things, mystical experiences that um, I, I, I had to do something about it. It was just not an experience for me. It was an experience that I had to share because I, I knew that a lot of people were going through that um, after I started researching. And uh, way before I started having this twin flame story, um, one of those meditations and the mystical experiences, I came about uh, a, a diagram because I studied the uh, oriental medicine. So I'm very familiar with the Taoism and the Tai Chi symbol and the five elements and things like that. And I really, really connected with it. And one day out of uh, those meditations, um, way before I had the treatment experience, uh, I came about with I came around with a, a diagram about uh, uh, how we are looking for our significant other, and we know that there is somebody out there, maybe not incarnated, but there's somebody out there that that is I, I wouldn't call it our our half exactly, but in a way it is. So in this diagram, I'm going to share with you. I hope you can see it. Okay. You see, that's the Tao, uh, and from the Tao is wholeness. Uh, from the Tao, duality is born, yin and yang. There's more to this than just what I'm diagram uh, I'm sharing with you because there's the uh, five elements that come from the yin and yang and so forth. But from the Tao, we are born into duality. The soul is born into duality. Spirit. Is, is wholeness, yin and yang, duality. So let's imagine that you are part of this whole and you have your other polarity with you, yin and yang, the two polarities. And within, there's a little yin and there's a little yang, okay? Then exactly as it happens with, a part of quite interesting, with cell division, you know, we have meiosis and mitosis and cell division, and that's sort of like the fractal imagery that came along with all this. We start uh, with, from this part, which is the yin, we start dividing in different uh, yin yang, you know, we divide like cell division until we reach to the other extreme. If you watch, this is completely the opposite to this one. So we go in a journey, if we go in a journey, this is the idea behind this. We go in a journey of disconnecting the most from ourselves, and then we go back to the journey of reconnecting in enlightenment, and then we go back to the Tao, which is unity. And in every phase, whether we incarnate or not, we are connected to our other part, to our other half. But in this part, we are the most disconnected from ourselves and therefore from our significant other. And then in different lifetimes, we come back to the journey of reconnecting until we become one again. I hope this, this makes sense to you. If you want to give me a, any feedback about, about this and if you have any questions about this, just um, write it down in the chat and I'll, I will take a look at it. But um, so this is this is an idea that came to me way before I encountered my dreams, my, my dream plane. Okay, so um, 
this is just a way of looking at it. There are many ways, many possibilities of how to look at this situation. This is just one. As much as the Aristophanes um, mythology is, is another. And we can look at from different uh, perspectives of, of the whole pie, and they all meet in the center. At the end, they are all one at the center. So this is just a way of looking at it that I hope it makes sense to you. Okay, so when we are ready to meet with our twin flames, they just appear. We don't have to look. We don't have to even have thought about encountering them. They just appear when the moment is right. Now, there's a lot of confusion about whether somebody is a twin flame or is a soulmate because it's a very intense experience. There is a major difference, major difference between soulmates and twin flames. Remember when I said at the beginning that uh, we need to change the root of our conditioning in order to change ourselves and therefore impact human consciousness um, and, and create a new reality, a new world. Well, again, since we are so lazy to do that just by ourselves, we have to encounter some out of the comfort zone experiences. Twin flames are the most powerful groundbreaking structure destroyers that we can ever encounter. They come into our lives to destroy us, but not in a bad way, obviously. We have to remember that we need to destroy all the very rigid structures. Let's talk about some rigid structures that we have created. Religion, politics, the economic system. They are so strongly rooted. And we just, to give you an image or an idea of, of the external world that we have created and how strongly rooted is they are in our existence. They are not just going to disappear because we know they need to disappear. No? Something really, really deep from the root of consciousness has to unfold and awaken that is more powerful than the rigidity of those structures, right? That will break them apart and see a new light. In order for that to happen massively, it needs to start happening personally. Then, who is the one being in our lives can, that can reach us so deeply that can actually help us question ourselves, our conditioning? Well, that's the twin flame. That is one way we can recognize a twin flame when we not only know that we are living apart and in difficult circumstances, uh, because remember that if we encounter with twin flames and we are not at this point where we can unite in consciousness and spiritual awakening to be one and then go back to the Tao, to the source uh, where we all came from, if we're not ready for that, the encounter could be like an explosion of atomic bomb. It actually happened to me like that. It was like, a, I've never felt like an explosion of an atomic bomb inside of me uh, until I, I met my twin flame and I, I suffered like crazy. He, he helped me to completely restructure my beliefs about relationships, my beliefs about the world, my beliefs about what I need to do. So destroying 
ourselves internally requires that we meet something, somebody that can reach so deeply into our consciousness that can shake our rigid structures, like I mentioned, like politics, like economics, like religion, and so and so and so, that are so, so strong. Well, we need to do that with ourselves and break ourselves in pieces. That's what the twin flame does. They break us into pieces so we can be reborn from the ashes like the phoenix. Now, while I personally uh, want an, another thing that for me was very clear that this was a twin flame experience is because the Kundalini energy started functioning, started waking, it started moving in me in such a way that it was so scary. My Kundalini awakening process started like maybe a decade or 15 years before I encountered my twin flame. But it was very slow and very like I didn't pay much attention to it. When I was in contact with my twin flame, that energy was just extreme. It was like a tractor running around my spinal column and, and it was stronger at night when I went to bed. And I didn't recognize it because in every chakra it sort of uh, moved differently. I ended up in the hospital two times because of energy stuck in my, in my chakras uh, with pains that I never experienced before in my life, like pain in the middle of my back where I'm pretty strong and I've never had issues with it, pain in the, my first thoracic vertebrae that I've never had any issues with it. It was just energy was stuck. Thank God uh, Tibetan monk was on, on, appeared on my way and helped me very much through this. Uh, but it was just amazing. So I knew that when my, it, this guy um, was my twin flame. And up to now, I still doubt just one thing. What I, my doubt is whether my real twin flame has incarnated and is part of the guy that I had the experience with or if my dream flame didn't incarnate and use this guy to give me all those horrible experiences. <laughs> That's the only thing, but I, I don't need to clarify. What was worth it was the experience that I went through. That's what was worth um, going through. The other day when I, I did this in Spanish as well, and uh, so I decided to go back and, and review some of the chapters that I shared. Oh my God. After the seventh chapter, I, will, I had a headache and I said, no, I cannot keep on watching this. This is just amazing all the, that I went through just to awaken into unconditional love. The experience of waking up to unconditional love came in different stages. It just didn't come in once and hit me on the head and said, okay, this is unconditional love. You got to understand it, whatever, whatever. No, it came in stages. It was gentle with me in <laughs> stages. And the final stage so far, because I'm sure there's more to the that what I went through, the final stage <clears throat> was so graceful, so beautiful. Because when it came to me, and it didn't come even to me like in a waking consciousness, but it came through a dream, through a very lucid dream that I still remember. Okay. When I understood that unconditional love was the main reason why twin flames are coming together, and not only that, but it is what we need to remember. We have forgotten so much what love is. We have no idea. We confuse attraction and desire with love, and that's just a little tiny bit expression of all that love is. And it's the first chakra, second chakra dimension of love. 
But as we go up in consciousness, that love that comes from the fourth dimension, fourth chakra, it's just, it's, it's what we're all looking for. I, that's, I, I have that certainty because when I was there and I experienced it, there was nothing in the world that was higher or more beautiful or more complete than that experience of unconditional love. What I understood at that moment was that there is no fear whatsoever in the experience of unconditional love. But I didn't know that I lived all my life in fear until I realized what it was to live without fear. And the strongest fear is this fear of separateness, of being alone and abandoned and not loved. That's not the truth of our essential self. That's just the truth of our ego world of duality and division, you know. And so this experience of unconditional love is the real reason why we encounter twin flames. Now, how we go about that experience, yeah, 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 it depends. It depends how each one of us faces the experiences that are so painful when we encounter twin flames. Remember, just remember one thing. When we start going through this suffering and pain, it's all about destroying the rigid structures in our consciousness so we can open our minds to limitless, limitless, endless, limitless interaction with limitless not how we are accustomed to we, we need stability groundedness to to feel okay with ourselves to feel confidence in this world that's just how the ego works and how, what the ego needs that's not the truth of our spiritual self it's just has no boundaries it's endless peace Endless light, endless freedom, endless love. And that's what um, Twin Flames are here for. Because if we want to change humanity and what's happen happening, now, one, say, one thing I, I would like to say, you know, it's like so frustrating that still it feels that the majority of humans are so into another world, are so into vanity, greed, uh, it's just so frustrating. Fear, fear, so much fear, so much violence, it's just horrible. And it, it sometimes it's a little draining and frustrating to um, realize that there's much more, but unless we experience it, it is useless to try to show that to other people. It's only through our personal experience that we become aware of those dimensions and other realities. It's only through our inner experience that we can actually realize those things. But most people are completely blocked because their attention is outside of themselves. Their attention lies all the way out and that creates the reality of what outside brings if we don't have a, a deep connection to ourselves if we don't have this very profound interaction with our inner voice we are actually never going to change what needs to be changed let me see there's a message hi carmen and hi carmen elena Sarita and Maya. Um, okay, she Carmen Lena says, I guess we can experience a twin flame that belongs to the same gender because it's from another sphere, right? Okay. A 
according to, to this diagram that I, I just uh, shared with you, and I'm going to share it again. Okay, that's possible. Twin flames can encounter in the same gender, but they are not able to, to reunite in these awakened states as a couple. Because, uh, you see, yin and yang, uh, let me see. Okay, so um, this is from the Tao. In order to come to duality, we come in polarities, okay? Yin and yang, uh, female, male, positive, negative. Duality is what makes our reality. Night, day, yin, uh, female, male, and so and so. Hello, Beth, how are you? Glad that you're here. Okay, so we on this process of, of uh, separating from our essence, essential self, and we go all the way to the distance to disconnect from our most inner part of ourselves with our soul. We disconnect, and therefore we disconnect with our twin flame completely. This is the most darkest night of the soul that we can ever face. And we can go through this situation in one lifetime, or this is also a fractal representation of many lifetimes, okay? So, on this process between here and here, twin flames could be of the same gender, okay? But in order to become whole again, they have to be the same seed from where they came. From here, this is an awakened wholeness that goes back to the Tao, okay? This is one way to look at it. It could be true, it could not be true. This is according to my experience and understanding of duality and our relationship to, to cosmos, the world, and how things work. To the, 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 this, is, this is the Oriental philosophy, but I already uh, shared uh, Plato's symposium and Aristophanes' way of looking at uh, soulmates and twin planes, or something, something of the sort. Okay, so you can encounter your twin plane of the same gender, but you cannot be a couple uh, in wholeness and awakened states. You can be a couple from the same gender, but you're still going to have to go through all the process of awakening until you are ready to be awakened. And in a lifetime, you will come in your original yin uh, or yang state, and your twin flame will come in its original yin or yang state. And then if you are both ready to be awakened spiritually to your original source, then you will become whole, you will become powerful, no measure of the power of this connection, and then you go back to the source. As, you know, you go back to the source in wholeness. So that's my belief, just because of, of the experiences I've had and the understanding I've had. Obviously, uh, we have to be clear that this is just a point of view. It can happen in many ways, but according to duality, you don't come to duality, which means two opposites. You don't come to duality, but same gender is the same gender, it's the same polarity. Okay? So I hope this um, this was clear for you. And, uh, you know, th this is um, just a, a point of view according to uh, duality and different polarities of the yin and yang and how duality comes to exist. Night, day, big, small, thin, fat, those are the realms of duality. Everything is uh, yin or yang according to whatever you are comparing to, okay? So that is very a very important point to make about Twin Flames and, and, uh, and, and, and their meeting, okay? Uh, whatever we do, we need to remember that this happens to tear us apart so we can be born and meet our true self, which is based on unconditional love. Remembering that we are in this very, very awful dysfunctional world, no wonder that we are encountering uh, twin flames and very strange mystical relationships. 
um, because it is uh, through the personal self that we get our, our rigidity of, of beliefs gets destroyed, but it is through our mystical connection that we become uh, awakened to different dimensions of existence. And uh, soulmates, let's get into soulmates. Um, we have only one twin flame, but we can have a couple more of soulmates. Um, my experience with soulmates is that they are uh, very strong and deep connections, that they are soul connections. They're not just deep physical connections. It could be a very wonderful physical sexual connection, but with no depth. That is not a soulmate relationship. That is a very strong sexual physical relationship. But we can have a wonderful sexual relationship uh, and, and, and in soulmates, it doesn't matter the gender. It could be same gender, different gender. Yeah. We can have very amazing soulmate relationships that are based uh, on a very profound connection that we, we feel that we've known that person before. And soulmates are in our lives to help us enjoy um enjoy relationships they are not easy necessarily they could be difficult sometimes but what we enjoy is this depth of connection which is so cool but it is never as deep it will never reach us as deep as the twin flames it will give us a lot of joy it will give us uh, many beautiful things but it won't give us the that so deep connection that we have with the twin flames and um, normally soulmates has to do with souls uh, they are beings that we have met not in one lifetime but possibly many lifetimes, because these are people that we feel very comfortable with. We, we know them. When we get, we get so familiar with somebody, it's like, I've seen you, I, I know you. This is the first time I've seen you in my life, but I know you. So when we have these kinds of things, it's possibly because we have met with this being in another lifetime, we have shared so many things that our souls are connected. And we come to support each other in this lifetime. Just recently, I watched a movie, which is uh, 222, um, 222. I think that's the name of the movie in English. And it, it, it's quite interesting because it has to do with uh, a past life relationships that they come to resolve some issues. And uh, it's very interesting. There's another one that I mentioned in the blog, but I don't remember the name of it. Um, it there's a book about it. Um, I'll try to remember, but it has to do a lot with with um, soulmates and how we we um, come in different lifetimes with the same people to relieve many things that we we need to resolve. Uh, some are karmic relationships, some are soulmate relationships. There is a difference between. A karmic relationship, which normally people we have issues with that we need to resolve. Those are more karmic relationships. So they are the ones that come to support us and we support them. Those are more like that. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not sure what, what, what Trudy is uh, sharing, but um, oh, nowadays there's a TV series uh, in stars, which is um, based on Diana Gabadon's uh, books on uh, Outlander. And uh, um, Jamie and Claire, if you've seen those or read the books, um, what would you think if you know about their story? Are they twin flames or are they soulmates? That would be an interesting discussion to, to go into. Are they twin flames or soulmates? Now, what, what I would believe that they have a lot of twin flames because um, they touch each other so deeply 
But what, what was more interesting is that when we're, they were separated for 20 years um, in their different li uh, lives in, and um, in those hundred years apart, they still were totally connected. And so that would be an interesting. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so that is what I, I have come to understand so far in my experiences with uh, twin flames and soulmates. And um, it was interesting when I finished and I ended my relationship somehow, ended that relationship with the twin flame, my Kundalini energy stopped um, moving in the same rhythm as it was when I was in contact with him. You know, I never did anything to stimulate the Kundalini rising. I never did meditation and asking for the Kundalini rising. I never did that. Um, so that's why it was uh, very interesting to realize that while I was with my twin flame, that energy was so wacko around my, my spine and, and how much um, inner awakening was bringing to me. That was the most important part of the Kundalini Rising. Was, it was bringing me so many mystical experiences and so many revealing um, uh, things to my life that it was like, oh my God, how, when am I going to be able to process all this? And when I uh, stopped connecting regularly with my twin flame, that energy stopped moving at the same rate. It was just very um, difficult for me to manage because when the Kundalini stopped moving, it still does move. Now it moves in the same rate as it did the time before I met my twin flame in those years where we started waking up and it was just moving very slow. So it's in that level again. And I'm just uh, open to flow with whatever has to happen. But when the energy stopped moving, I, I went into a crisis because I realized how powerful that energy is and uh, how, as it was moving through me, was bringing so many revelations uh, of, of, uh, of the inner world, of uh, the spiritual dimensions. And so I hope that, I don't know, what needs to happen now in order for that energy to keep on moving because it stopped at my heart chakra and uh, it didn't go to my fifth chakra and uh, um, the way it moved um, in my heart chakra was so interesting because it, it, it perforated my from my back all the way to the front it, it was perforating like um, I don't know like you know uh, we call it in Spanish a talado. I don't know the name of that thing in English, but it's like with a thing that you make a hole in the in the wall uh, with, and it was it felt like that. It was going perforated my heart and went through the front, and then uh, it, it it moved that way, and and from there I I had the the uh, understanding, the higher understanding of uh, of the heart chakra energy and unconditional love. Um, and then it started moving a little higher than the fourth chakra, but it didn't get to the fifth chakra. So I don't know what will happen if ever in this lifetime that energy is going to keep on moving to my fifth chakra. I hope it moves a little more than that because I'm, I'm kind of missing all that it brought to me, but I cannot control that. It, it just happens as it has to happen. So anyway, um, if you're new to, to our Facebook fan page, um, you can go into our blog, which is awakening.goypaz.com, and uh, that's where I have shared the 22 chapters of the Twin Flame story. I also have um, a couple of uh, articles that I've written, um, yet um, uh, that's, that's what I have so far, and we have the, the YouTube channel, which is a bilingual channel. I uh, upload mostly videos in Spanish, but I have a lot of a lot in English as well. So you can subscribe, and when you find a, a 
video in your language and the theme, the subject resonates with you, you can go ahead and, and look at it. Anyways, um, I think that uh, I'm pretty much done with uh, this vision of um, the Twin Flames and the Soulmates. Um, it is very important that we understand that we need to, to change and we need the sufficient stimuli uh, to really break apart those structures that are obsolete and we need to create new structures that are uh, uh, more aligned with the experience of true love. Not just true love for somebody, just one person. The experience of love for the world, for the cosmos, for uh, the reason why we exist, animals, plants, flowers, everything. We need to experience love. And that would be awesome if we are able to uh, do that in our life. But we are just seeds, um, seeds of consciousness. We are uh, seeds for the new age. So we have the toughest work of all because the seeds are not seen. They just blossom. The seed stays and creates roots and we are the roots of the new life unfolding and the world will see the life unfolding it won't see the roots we are the roots and we have the strongest and toughest work of them all we are the base in which the new world will be created and that's why we're here so thank you so much for your time for sharing this, I don't know how many minutes we've been um, up here. And um, I will actually um, upload this video also in the YouTube channel. And if this was good for you and it resonated with you, the visions that I share, which are just, as I mentioned before, they're just pieces of a cake, pieces of a pie, okay? All those pieces of a pie that can be seen in different ways meet at the center. Okay, so we all uh, are uh, focusing on that center. And uh, this is what I can uh, share for now. Uh, I hope it made sense. Uh, and uh, please share with others. I would be very thankful if this was good for you and it was helpful, share it with, uh, with others. If it wasn't, then just don't share it. But I thank you for listening to this and um, it was a really cool time oh yeah we started at uh, 8 p.m and it's been 52 minutes so have a great time have a great life unfold yourself into your your true self uh, your essential self and remember that the seed of your true self is unconditional love thank you so much Carmen Elena, Sarita, Trudy, Beth, uh, and Maya, and all the people that have um, written. Um, remember to visit the blog again, awakening.gopac.com, and our YouTube channel, which is Radio Serenidad. Have a good one. Take care. Bye bye.